Landmark Group are a Dubai conglomerate and homegrown success story. Their retail brands are synonymous across the region, and they recently announced the launch of a huge new warehouse and distribution facility in Jebel Ali Free Zone. We sat down with Mehin Shah, the Chief Supply Chain Officer of the Landmark Group's retail division, to discuss what this means for the company and the wider industry. Welcome to Dubai Works, a business podcast about the innovators, the products, the services, and trending topics. Love and Dubai's take on the business stories that matter. My name is Richard Fitzgerald. I'm the founder of Augustus Media, publishers of Love and Dubai, Love and Saudi, and Smashy TV. Each week, we'll be interviewing the dynamic business leaders of Dubai. Welcome to Dubai Works. Thank you. Thanks for coming on. It's great to chat and be back in the Landmark Group's office. Thank you for having me here. Uh, so this is the retail division and you're the chief supply chain officer. What does that involve? So, um, you know, as a landmark group, we are actually one of the largest non-food retailers in the region in the sense that we actually move goods of the largest volume and value. And as a part of that, we probably run the largest captive logistics supply chain teams mm. in the region. What mm. that means is <clears throat> um, almost uh, for all the brands of Landmark, whether it is, say, Centerpoint, Home Center, uh, Max, all the Centerpoint brands of Splash, Baby Shop, etc., the logistics is centrally run. Right from once the goods are ready, from wherever in the world to be sourced to the customer's bag, movement of all the goods is what is handled by the supply chain team. Mm. And so that is what I basically lead at Landmark. And at Landmark, as I said, we run one of the largest captive fleets of almost 8 million square feet of warehousing space, 7,000 people in warehouses all across. Um, Where almost, are these located? Um, all across the GCC, mm. all across the GCC, uh, with the largest teams probably in the UAE and Saudi Arabia, but with presence in every country. So um, in a nutshell, supply chain and logistics when it comes to retail touches many parts. It's, it's related to the ordering process from a consumer point of view, yeah. the production, the manufacturing, the garments, the, that part, and then also the distribution and the transport of goods. Yeah, a lot goes behind getting the right product in the right place at the right time in front of the customer or in the customer's home if it's e-commerce or in the customer's bag if it's to the store. A lot goes into it. Uh, besides selecting the product, buying the product, the movement of it, the logistics of it is what is taken care of centrally by the supply chain team in Landmark. This, yeah. sort of, this sort of logistics operation is in hot demand at the moment from an e-commerce point of view. Um, to reach a consumer in a fast speed is really uh, important. Um, that must be very valuable for Landmark, Landmark to have that, uh, you know, to have the owned uh, warehouses and the, and the distributors and the partners. It is indeed. And actually a you know, big difference in the region between a lot of other retail brands and us is Landmark. We have created our own retail brands. These are not just international brands that have come into the region. We've created our own retail brands and we control the supply chain end to end. And that gives us a lot more ability to kind of move the goods the way we want. Mm. And you're absolutely right that in today's world, I mean, supply chain was always the backbone and network of retail. But in today's world, in today's e-commerce dominant or increasingly important e-commerce world, that is a great advantage to have. To give you an example, we just finished the White Wednesday event, which everybody was having in November. There was a big sale on e-commerce on the, by, by almost everyone in the market. And our, uh, we call our event as White Wednesday across all of our brands. Is that similar and to the White Friday or is it Exactly. Yeah, it's a landmark one. Right. It's yeah. a landmark, landmark event was called White Wednesday. Nice. Uh, we did record e-commerce sales, uh, you know, double digit, triple digit growth over previous years. Excellent. Huge volumes in a short span of time. And because we run our own logistics and supply chain, we were so ready that despite of the huge volumes, we were one of the only retailers who were still offering a 48 hour delivery promise in the UAE. Mm. Right? That you order huge number of orders that flew in during the White Wednesday period, and yet we were delivering it within 48 hours to the customer. Amazing. That makes a huge difference. So Landmark Group in general is a UAE business success story. Have you been involved in it for, what's, how have you seen it evolve? So I joined Landmark about six years ago. Um, and at that time, already a lot of 
transition into new ways of working, including this automated DC recently that we've just launched and all had were already on the cards. Uh, before that, I was in consulting in the region for about six, seven years. So was already very familiar with the uh, you know entire region. Had done a lot of projects with very large projects, which actually had mean, had meaningfully shaped the region, mm. whether it's in UAE or in Saudi Arabia or in other countries. And then I joined Landmark, and I was new to retail in a way, and that was exciting to learn because retail is indeed a very very exciting industry. But I joined as the head of audit. Which allowed me to kind of go across the company <clears throat> uh, through the you know uh, uh, yeah. complete breadth and width view. to yeah. understand the full view of how the organization worked and what can we really add. And my consulting experience in the past, uh, I was with McKinsey. Those kind of things also helped a lot because you're continuously looking for how do you really improve the process to serve the customer better. Efficiencies and looking at the overall systems. Absolutely. And, yeah. and then three, three and a half years back. And <laughs> And at that time, we, the landmark had just taken the decision to put an automated DC, which we just went live with. Which what the, is DC uh, The distribution center. Sorry, is I'm, this the new initiative? That that's you built? the yeah. So we've just now in uh, last month launched, uh, inaugurated actually the fully automated distribution center in Jebel Ali Free Zone, which is not not only kind of the largest investment by the landmark group, but also the largest investment by anyone in logistics and probably one of the largest automated warehouses under one roof in the world. What sort of investment are we talking about? A billion dirhams plus. Oh, wow. Yeah. And so that decision to invest this billion dirhams that would radically change the way that we handle our entire logistics and supply chain was just made. And so at that time, I was given the opportunity of moving from audit to supply chain to say, now, you know, do the changes required to make this project successful. Now, it it was not just about building this automated warehouse. It was also a lot about how do you do all the changes around it? Because putting a big automated warehouse in the middle of your system means that you're basically changing the way your supplier packs, the way you buy goods, the way you distribute goods, the way you move goods, the way containers are packed, the way your movements happen across different geographies and everything changes. Yeah. And so, uh, a large part of the time was actually into how do we redefine our new ways of working and get ready for this futuristic distribution center, which is then going to be make us future ready. Incredible. Yeah. So how has Dubai initiated? How, how have you chosen and grown with Dubai and decided to do this investment, given how, given how the company has grown into different markets? Uh, why Dubai and why JAPSA? So... Our headquarters has always been Dubai, and I think it's a phenomenal place, to be honest, to really grow the business. The, the whole business-friendly environment in the region that has been created is very conducive to grow businesses. Mm. Right? And so it was a very easy decision for us to make. I mean, I'm saying it was easy, but in hindsight, at that time, there was a lot of deliberation. But there was, it, was, it, you know, it was easy to swing the decision to say that, yes, we should do it in Jabza for the following reason. Number one, we had been operating in Jabza for quite some time. And so we had already a good strategic partnership going with the Jabal Ali Free Zone. Mm. Number two, more importantly, the whole uh, you know, collaborative system that Dubai has put in place, which actually makes it business friendly. For example, you have Dubai Trade, which is a part of DP World and a part of Jabza, which coordinates with all the authorities. So if a big business like us wants to do some change or innovation, then you can actually get into a common meeting with customs, Dubai municipality, the ports, the uh, uh, you know Jabza free zone authorities and all on the table and say, how do we make this happen? And you the, the reciprocation of, okay, we'll do a pilot, we'll do a POC and we'll support you to make this change is just phenomenal. Hmm. And so it was very clear to us that the kind of business support that all of these authorities come together and bring to us as a business to make this place business friendly was phenomenal. And that's why we were a big fan of the region and the Jabsa. And hence we said, if we have to do such a big investment, which practically changed a lot of processes, not only for us, even for them, even for, you know, uh, I must say that for a, a large project like this, you have to actually, so <clears throat> to give you an example, we were originally doing all our distribution of our goods ready to store from outside of the free zone. Now with this automated DC, 
our daily deliveries go to the store to our 350 stores in the UAE daily from the free zone. Okay. Which means that we actually had to do a lot of process changes to make sure how does this clear customs border and gates very fast so that every day this trucks can go and be in time before the mall opening hours so that the goods are already merchandised and ready in the mall. Wow. Now that uh, you know collaboration between customs, Javza, uh, and all the authorities and all was very easily possible because we were in Javza okay. and very easily doable in, before we were. And that's why those were the kind of decision making criteria of why Dubai, why Javza. This is a business friendly place and really helps you grow your business beautifully. And, you know, you, this is a significant investment in a time where, you know, retail consumption and consumer behavior around shopping is ever evolving. What makes you confident that you've chosen the right strategy and that this is the right time to make a bold bet on retail yep uh, <clears throat> we are retailers we've always been in retail and uh, you know retail the face of retail might keep changing of how we serve our customers retail itself is never going to go away mm. and so the customers will want the goods that they want what was important for us was you know f four or five years back when we were thinking about this dc we realized that the pace at which retail is growing if we had to continuously grow at that pace and keep investing, we would need, if we have today, say, uh, at that time, if we had five, four, five, six thousand people in the warehouses, we would need five, seven, ten thousand people in the warehouses to keep mm. happening. And to sustainably keep growing became more and more difficult. That how you, you can't just keep adding more and more space and more and more people and make it very manual process for very large volumes. And hence, we decided to go for this automated DC because now, at whatever pace we grow, this DC actually is scalable and allows us to give that efficiency that without, you know, adding a huge amount of infrastructure more to this, we will be able to service large volumes. To give you an example, when we got into this DC a few years back, we did not know that e-commerce will grow at what pace when. Mm. But now that we have the automated DC, we are now ready that if e-commerce also grows a lot faster or slower, whichever way it goes, we will be ready to serve the customer at lightning speed. You're ready for that. And we're ready for that. And so we are launching actually our e-commerce deliveries to happen from this automated DC from February onwards. Excellent. And so in a sense, the way I like to look at it is not about, uh, am I now ready for the DC and is the DC ready for me? It's more about is this DC large and flexible enough so that we are future ready? Because we don't know what challenges the future might hold. But are we going to be able to flexibly change and service our customers the way we want? That idea is what we put this large investment. Interesting. And the brands that you mentioned under the Landmark Group actually touch different types of customer in Dubai, <clears throat> whether it's for the home, whether it's for family or whether it's for fashion. How do, you, how do you make, does that come into consideration with logistics planning? Oh, absolutely. See, if you are, if you've been living in the Middle East, in UAE or any part of GCC, then all of our brands will be household names for you. Mm. You know, you can't be living in the region and not having bought from Max Centerpoint Home Center. And a lot of people that I meet when I tell them Landmark, they might may or may not realize, but when, they say, when I say Home Center, I'll say, ah, my furniture comes from Home Center. That's mm. the first store I went to. We are probably also one of the largest home installation fleets. You know, every day we enter 1,500 plus homes wow. to fix home center and home box furniture. Yeah. And sometimes that is 2,000 homes a day. So we enter 1,000 in the region, I'm saying. And that way, that means you are actually a household brand. You touch a lot of people's lives. And the experience that you get about how the home center crew entered your house and fixed your furniture then leaves your memory about, you know, what was the experience like. And that's why logistics and same way as e-commerce. If you ordered something from Splash or a Max, we actually give today in most parts of UAE even a 24-hour delivery promise. Yeah. And so how well was that delivery handled for you? How well was the furniture installation handled for you? Leaves a lasting memory for the brand for you. And that's how the logistics becomes a very, very critical and integral part of the brand experience. Because it's end to end. Uh, as well as having it yourself, do you ever see logistics, especially this type of speed, last mile, being a standalone business? Would you ever offer it to other entities and could it break out that way? It's funny that you should ask. I don't know whether you were already knew about it and hence you're asking about it. But uh, with the automated DC launch, we now 
have even more capacity. We were already the largest captive fleet. And so this large capacity was created with the idea that we will also now open up our captive, our know-how and capabilities and infrastructure, which we were only using captive for even others to use. So we've launched a 3PL logistics company, a third party logistics company, um, so that anybody else who wants to use an automated distribution center or warehousing facility or our distribution reach and all are more than welcome to kind of come to us and use that. And it doesn't have to be only retailers, even say electronics, white goods, other product players can actually benefit from this because <clears throat> uh, as I mentioned earlier, we are the largest mover of goods in terms of non-food retail. And so we really understand how do you get the goods from anywhere in the world to your retail stores in the malls mm -hmm. very, very well. And anybody who wants to use these services, uh, we call that company, we, used, we call our automated DC project code name was Mega DC. This is what we still call it. Mega and DC. so we've now named the 3PL company as Omega nice. uh, Logistics. Yeah. And so we say that, you know, uh, we've made the investments so that you don't have to yeah, in good. logistics. Marketing as well as logistics. I like yeah. it. You touched on 2020 with e-commerce. There's obviously the expo coming up. Uh, what, what are the plans around there? And can I also ask about logistics in the future in terms of, you know, we see robots in these warehouses and doing a lot of that work and, and blockchain. How, how much of that is already starting and what does the future hold? Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> so let me a little bit talk about the technology first and then uh, we'll uh, talk a little about 2020. Um, technologically, <clears throat> we've been very fast. I mean, people don't realize this sometimes. So we've been very fast in adapting new technologies which benefit the business. Like, for example, for blockchain, we are one of the only retailers, not only retailers, we are the only one business organization in the region and probably even globally, which has done a full end-to-end -end transaction already. We've done a pilot end-to-end -end where the physical and the blockchain transactional movement was simultaneous in the sense that the entire movement from supplier to port to shipping carriers to banks, documents, customs and all was done using a blockchain technology. Uh, so we've piloted it. Uh, it was successful. A proprietary tech or have you partners? It is a collaborative tech yeah. uh, <clears throat> with the likes of some banks, uh, uh, with the likes of, you know, Microsoft platform, mm -hmm. bankers like HSBC partners who are with us um, using Jobs and DP World and Customs as also our collaborative partners. We've done the trial transaction in blockchain. Similarly, for this automated warehouse, it's interesting to talk some of the technologies about the automated warehouse. So the automated warehouse is equipped with three main technologies. One is the goods to person system, which is kind of a robotic shuttle system. Originally in my warehouses, a typical person would walk about five to six kilometers a day in the warehouse trying to pick the goods that he has to send to the store. Yeah. Now in this automated warehouse, the robotic shuttles do all the movement. So the person is just standing there. So it's a goods to person, not a person to goods. Yeah. And he just stands there and the system tells him, pick five items from this box and put it into this box for the store. And he just follows those instructions. As a result, he used to spend 80, 90% walking and 10, 20% picking those items. Now he's spending 100% of the time picking those items. Okay. His productivity is up by five to eight times. Okay. Right, using these robotic shuttles in the... He might need to exercise more, but that's okay. <laughs> yeah, he will, need to, he will definitely need to exercise a lot more. So I'm just telling them, you know, don't grow your fat now anymore. Now that you're only standing in one place, but it's still physical labor. It's still not... Yeah, yeah. You don't really walk too much, but it's still physical labor to yeah. some extent. Um, same way, we have a pallet in, pallet out, completely automated system, which is... <clears throat> uh, once you put the pallet in the system, it takes care of the whole. A pallet is something which has about say, 15, 20, 30 cartons. And so once you put the pallet in the system, it takes care of the where to store the pallet and all is taken care of the system. Okay. So, we didn't, so we've created this highway warehouse, which is the highest warehouse in the region, 44 meters high, okay. which is completely automated pallet handling system. Now, because it's automated, humans don't need to enter it. And so what we've done in the innovation, as an innovation there is that instead of using fire, uh, fighting technologies like sprinkler systems, we use fire prevention technology called oxyreduct. We've just taken the oxygen out of that warehouse. Out means we've reduced it from say 20% to 13%. Mm. At that oxygen level, you can't light a fire. Even if you light a matchstick or a uh, spark, it won't light. Which means that you, you, know, you just can't have a fire that you have to then fight against. 
Um, now, this is possible because the whole warehouse is automated and no humans need to enter. Mm. Third automation that we've used here is a garment on hanger, which is completely, uh, you know, garments are on hanger and they are completely handled by a system on conveyors where they even sort it in the exact order that you have to display it in the store. Mm. So, if a certain set of products needs to be displayed in the store, uh, let's say one of our uh, fashion stores like uh, Baby Shop, Max or Splash, then these garments will exactly go in the order so that the store person just has to pick up this, uh, the whole rail and put it on the shelf and it significantly reduces all the amount of physical labor that you need to do in the whole logistics chain. Okay. So, these are just some examples of you know, technologies that we are already deploying. Um, apart from this, right. there is a lot of intelligent thinking happening in the background in terms of what kind of algorithms do we use so that we understand our demand patterns better and our right product lands up in the right store or right customer's hand. Mm. Um, and there's a massive amount of work being done in that area. What, how do we use these algorithms the best? So these are very, very exciting times yeah. for technology because all of this is not for the fancy engineering, but all of this is more for how do you serve the customer better and more efficiently with speed and low cost? Wow. And it really allows us to do that yeah. much better. It's very interesting. Um, I think, you know, we were going to talk about Expo 2020, but it's as if you've already got a solution that matches the kind of ambition about the future of retail that will, yeah. Exactly. That's why I said, let me talk about the technology first, because that's also close to the theme that Expo 2020 is running, mm. uh, uh, you know, uh, in, in Dubai. Um, I think everybody is very excited about the expo. Some of our brands are also official merchandise partners mm. uh, and suppliers to the expo. So we are very, very kind of excited about that very important partnership. Uh, we've also been on and off in discussions about how can, as I mentioned, that we are now ready to even serve third party logistics. How can we help some of the people in, involved in the expo in the logistics area? Mm. Because there'll be a huge amount of movement of goods in and out and people will need third party logistics and temporary warehousing space or movement services etc and how can we actually get involved in that and make sure that you know we help either the expo or the people participating in the expo to yeah. do their logistics a lot better interesting yes. fascinating space to watch but clearly yes. landmark group are well positioned for the future re retail Absolutely. Thanks a lot, Absolutely. Mahin. Thanks for joining us on the show. Thank you. Thank you. Hey guys, thanks for listening to another episode of Dubai Works. There's more on this episode on lovingdubai.com. And also, please do follow our other podcasts, The Love and Daily Live and The Love and Show.